Pokemon Platinum is one of my favorite games of the entire franchise, so I decided to ruin that. I played through the entirety of Platinum using only the move Metronome, a move that randomly selects any other move in existence. This is how it went. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I hope you enjoy the video. To start things out, I chose Chimchar, having access to multiple stab moves after evolving away. Oh, after beating our rival in a finger wag off, we make our way to Sand Gem Town to receive the Pokedex. We head back home, grab the running shoes, and make our way into the wide world of Pokemon. We catch ourselves a Shinx and head north to Jubilife City. I also learned that since opposing trainers use Metronome as well, this isn't a game of skill. This is a game of chance. After looking at the entire list of moves, the percent chance to use an attacking move of any kind is a whopping 57%. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. We grab the Pokatch and head east to quell the bad hair day yet again before arriving in Orberg Town, home of the first badge. We head back to catch a Starly, which normally wouldn't make sense, but when every move in the game is a roulette spin, you can put your small little fragile bird up against a heavy rock with arms. After leveling up my Pokemon to match the gym, Starly evolves and we're ready to face Rourke. Down to a 2v2 with random shrapnel now dug straight into my chest, we take down Onyx and Kranidos to win ourselves the coal badge, because children yearn for the mines. We set out to reach our next destination, and in the process, Shinx becomes Luxio, Chimchar becomes Monferno, and we catch Budu, who probably won't be all that useful. We also grab a Bidu for HMs, and to use Judgment. Now that we've made it to Floroma Town, we leave Floroma Town. We defeat the grunts outside of Valley Windworks, who then locks us out. Hey, fuck you! We head back into Floroma Town. Spoiler alert, we will be leaving Floroma Town soon. We head to the meadow to frolic in some flowers, toss a few grunts to the side, and leave Floroma Town. Now that we have the key, we enter the Windworks, take out the grunts, and remove this horrid thing from existence, rescuing a hostage in the process. My precious time that I lost being here. After battling a few trainers, we arrive in Eterna Forest, where we are greeted by Cheryl. I have no clue who this lady is, why is she following me? We scrounge through the various double battles and trainers, and after safely escorting Cheryl to the other side to never be seen again, I decide I'm gonna catch a few Pokemon in this route for my team. We'll find the other one a little later. Now, the reasoning for using Buneri is pretty obvious. Being a normal type with above average defensive stats, Lopani is actually a very good defensive option for this team. Only being weak to fighting type and having immunity to ghost, there aren't a lot of moves that can really do big damage to Lopani, which can definitely benefit me later on. On top of this, Lopani has the ability Cute Charm, which has the chance to infatuate any Pokemon of the opposite gender if hit by a physical move, which is extremely helpful. Now equipped with five team members, I head straight to the Eterna City gym Gym, overwhelming the gym trainers and Gardenia for our second badge. We finesse our way through social interaction with a woman who gives us the HM for cut before heading into the galactic hideout where we absolutely dice Jupiter and rescue another hostage. Oh, so it's fine when this guy has one, huh? We steal a bike from the bike guy, even though he was planning on giving me a bike for free anyway, and head down the bike path towards Heart Home City on my bike. Upon our arrival, we meet our mother again in the contest hall and head towards the gym. Fantina's gym prioritizes ghost types, and at this point, I hadn't seen much, if any, of the type, so I wasn't truly prepared for what I was heading into. With many ghosts having the ability levitate and already being immune to normal and fighting types, this meant that the pool of moves that could succeed was exponentially lower, dropping that 57% effective move pool all the way to a staggering 36%. Yeah, so I got bodied my first attempt at Fantina, while also learning that the move in prison is broken when all your team knows is a singular move. I decided I'd be playing at a huge disadvantage if I didn't utilize this information, so I decided to check out Shedinja, who could dominate this kind of playthrough. It's given to you by Professor Rowan after you complete this Synodex. All right, I'll go fuck myself. Never mind. With Shedinja off the table, I thought over some different ghost options to give me a similar advantage before settling on Rotom. Rotom is an average Pokemon stat-wise, but with decent bulk and special attack, along with the levitate ability, it would be an amazing asset to the team, also having stab or same type attack bonus for two types instead of one. Since Rotom is an event Pokemon that spawns only at night, and I was too lazy to time skip, I decided to wait on Rotom and stormed back in to rematch Fantina. This time, we didn't get imprisoned, and Duskull, Haunter, and Miss Magius were overwhelmed by my complete and utter luck, baby! It's all about the money, baby! We grab our third badge and head to the nearest church to pray for better metronome luck. 
After realigning our faith, we fight our rival, pass through Salacion Town, and run into a trainer with a Drift Blim who didn't do any damage to us at all. I have a hunch that Small Ant wouldn't have had much trouble with Ace Trainer Dennis either. No! No! But now that Dennis is out of the way, we pass through the gates and reach Veilstone City, home to the casino. I'm trying to pay for my kid's college, okay? Instead, I run into the department store to check if they sell shiny stones, but since they don't, I just head for the gym. And after being way too confused over a puzzle designed for 10-year-olds, I evolve Luxio into Luxray and start my shadow boxing match against Maylene and her freaks. Metatite and Machoke hit the canvas before Lucario is tagged in, and after a little more wiggling of my silly little finger, we win the lightweight world championship, which is oddly shaped just like a cobble badge. Now that that's taken care of, I head south and find myself in Pastoria City, home to the Safari Zone and our next gym. We've upgraded in weight classes as our next opponent is Crash Awake, the heavyweight world champion. He smells like fish. I have to battle my rival again, and after getting absolutely rocked, we scrape by with a victory, heal up, and head into the gym. As we level up our team, Staravia becomes becomes Star Raptor and Monferno becomes Infernape, which is awesome in case you didn't notice. Wake leads with a Gyarados, but Infernape washes him away. Star Raptor handles Quagsire, leaving just a Floatzel in our path. But his ace was merely a facade as Luxray O coded, giving us the heavyweight championship belt. We got the Fen Badge. Move, Squam, get out, come on, get out. With the Psyducks out of the way, we venture towards Cynthia's grandma's house. I had an appointment scheduled. We head into the Celestic Town ruins where we have our first run in against Cyrus. He doesn't put up much of a fight as we drop his Sneasel, Golbat, and Murkrow at a steady rhythmic pace. Oh, kind of like a metronome. Cynthia's grandma gifts us the HM for Surf, and with this we can head back west towards Canalave City. But before that, I make my way back to Veilstone, and we find the Pokemon Masseur, Masseuse? Massage Lady, to raise the friendship of my Baneri. I don't like that. Are you happy yet? So now that we're in Cantilave, I defeat my rival again and head towards the 6th gym. Being Steel-type, this gym will be difficult as a ton of moves I can use are resisted or immune. My percentage of neutral or super effective moves is dropped all the way to 11% on pure Steel-types. Now, although this number is a little biased as there aren't any Pokemon in the game that are pure Steel-type, dual Steel-types still offer a tough matchup for me. Luckily for me, I didn't know any of these stats until I started editing. Would Steelix be a good Pokemon to have? I'm not gonna worry about it. I can always come back later. But we grab the shiny stone in Iron Island and our Roselia blossoms into a Roseray. After struggling to get through each Steelix and Magneton and failing to realize how much I could be benefiting from having a Steelix or Magneton of my own, I finally reached Byron, who I managed to scathe by and obtain my sixth badge on the first attempt thanks to some good luck from my HM Pelipper. Also, I don't have a low bunny yet. I decided to catch a Floatzel and add it to my team because I have a good grasp on defensive typings. I also haven't caught Rotom yet, mostly because it only spawns at night, and like I said before, I'm lazy. We take some time stopping Team Galactic's plans for the Sinnoh Trio, and then head through Mount Coronet until we reach the snowy Route 216, where our Baneri finally evolves. We arrive in Snowpoint City and head straight for Candace's gym. I sped through the puzzle, and the seventh badge was on the horizon. Roseray deletes Sneasel with Head Smash, Floatzel takes out Piloswine with Night Slash, Abomb Snow gets deleted with explosion and Frostlass falls to a fire fang. Woohoo! It was after this that I decided to actually try and get Rotom, so I risked it all and changed the time appropriately. And after returning to Eterna Forest, I entered the old chateau. And to my surprise, it was here. We catch the Rotom far later than we should have and immediately add him to the team in place of Rosary. Could I have done this five badges ago? Yeah. Did I? No. This is me when I go through the Galactic Warehouse. We take on Cyrus a second time, and after sweeping his team with Rollout, he gives us the Master Ball, which I certainly won't be using to catch a certain Pokemon and shamelessly use throughout the rest of my run. We release the trio and make our way back to Mount Coronet's Peak, which I've never been before. I don't know why I said that. We defeat the commanders and hop into a portal where we stuff the god of the underworld into a purple baseball. 
Goodbye, old friend. I'll see you again soon. So now that we've saved the world, we beeline straight to Shunny, Shunny, Sh Shunny, Shunny, dude, oh my god. Sunny Shore City, where we find Volkner, fly through the gym trainers, get stuck on the gym puzzle, and finally take on the eighth gym. Giratina's Pound kills Jolteon, Staraptor's Flare Blitz kills Raichu, Rotom's Rollout kills Luxray, and a final rollout kills Electivire, giving us our final badge. His Pokemon are dead now, by the way. We venture north towards the Pokemon League, and after a little swim, we head into Victory Road. We rush in, battle a few trainers, and before we know it, we're slamming on the doors of the Elite Four. Tickle! I just hit a guillotine! That Napoleon got his head chopped off! All right, in we go! Let's do this, boys! After leveling up and finishing preparations, we head into our final challenge. Aaron was first on our list. Lopini takes out Yan Mega with Ice Fang before Infernape and Rotom get absolutely nuked by Drapion's Sacred Fire and Thrash. A bite from Staraptor finishes the job, along with an Arrow Blast to take out the Scizor. Vespiquen follows, and after deleting itself with Healing Wish and Air Cutter, finishes off Heracross one down. Big Bertha is second, and her lead Whiskash falls to a jump kick and a double edge from Giratina. Infernape explodes, dragging Gliscor down with him. Rotom turns to Rotom Wash as Hydro Pump and a failed high jump kick finish off Hippowdon. Giga Drain respectfully drains Golem, leaving just a Rhyperior, who earthquakes my Luxray before falling to Star Raptor's Power Whip. Flint is next, and I choose to lead Lopany for access to Cute Charm. It doesn't work. A sludge from Luxray finishes off Houndoom, a rock slide topples Flareon, and a dive drowns Rapidash. After Infernape and Giratina lock each other onto the field, they use Parish Song, killing both of them. Luxray Swift drops Meg Mortar, and with that, we have two trainers left. I lead with Infernape because everyone knows fighting is good against Psychic. Lucian sends out Mr. Mime to lead, who dies to a seed bomb and heat wave. Espeon follows and uses Imprison, forcing me into using Struggle. This might be a problem. Infernape drops it to low health before Staraptor finishes the job. Bronzong comes in and immediately explodes, and Alakazam is beat up by my remaining Pokemon. As the last stand between me and the champion, Galade is burned by a Will-O-Wisp and dies the next turn. All that remains is Cynthia, and with a full team matching my level, this is gonna be tough. She leads with Spiritomb, who has zero weaknesses, only being neutrally damaged by 34% of all moves. Along with that, Spiritomb also has the ability Pressure, which doubles the amount of power points used per move. Infernape falls, but I use her healing turn to bring him back. Giratina's Crab Hammer smashes the spirits, and a fire and ice combo wilts the flowers. Togekiss uses High Jump Kick on a Ghost type. Stupid. Lucario follows, and after killing both Infernape and Lopunny, Rotom avenges them with Rock Wrecker. With only two options left, Cynthia brings out her Melodic, and after getting an Aqua Ring and Minimize, this thing was so annoying to kill. And a full restore. Thanks. The only thing that saved me was a crit sky attack from Star Raptor. I'm glad I prayed earlier. Garchomp was all that was left, and after playing Patty Cake for 20 turns and a death, Giratina's Avalanche defeats Cynthia, crowning us champions of the Sinnoh region. After 18 self KOing moves and three whiteouts, I beat Pokemon Platinum using only Metronome. Thank you so much for watching the video. Subscribe if you made it this far, it really helps me out. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.